In this video, I will explain to you the four most important items for you to have a clean aquarium. Bacteria colony, less fish, overfeeding, and more plants. Let's dive in. In a new aquarium, beneficial bacteria colonize various surfaces, including the substrate, over time. This process is known as the nitrogen cycle and typically occurs in several stages. Initially, ammonia is produced from fish waste, uneaten food, and decaying organic matter. Ammonia is toxic to fish, but serves as a food source for certain bacteria, particularly Nitrosomonas species. These bacteria begin to colonize surfaces in the aquarium, including the substrate, and convert ammonia into nitrite through a process called nitrification. Nitrite, while less toxic than ammonia, is still harmful to fish. As the Nitrosomonas bacteria continue to multiply and establish themselves in the aquarium, another group of bacteria called Nitrospora species begins to colonize surfaces. Nitrospora bacteria convert nitrite into nitrate, a less harmful compound. Nitrate is relatively less toxic compared to ammonia and nitrite, but high levels can still be harmful to fish if allowed to accumulate. Nitrate is removed from the aquarium through regular water changes or by plants, which can use it as a nutrient for growth. The substrate provides a large surface area for beneficial bacteria to colonize, especially if it is made of porous materials like gravel or sand. Over time, as the nitrogen cycle progresses, these bacteria establish themselves within the substrate, contributing to the biological filtration of the aquarium. With time and proper care, the substrate in your aquarium will become home to a thriving colony of beneficial bacteria helping to maintain a stable and healthy aquatic environment for your fish and plants. Plants play a significant role in cleaning aquarium water through a process known as biological filtration and phytomediation. Plants help remove nitrogenous waste products from the water. Fish produce ammonia as waste, which is toxic at high levels. Beneficial bacteria in the aquarium convert ammonia into nitrite and then into nitrate. Plants uptake nitrate as a nutrient for growth, effectively removing it from the water. This process, known as the nitrogen cycle, helps maintain water quality and creates a healthier environment for fish. Aquatic plants have the ability to absorb and assimilate various pollutants and organic compounds from the water, including heavy metals, dissolved organic matter, and certain toxins. They act as natural filters, improving water clarity and quality by removing impurities and excess nutrients. In addition to their filtration capabilities, plants also oxygenate the water through photosynthesis. During the day, plants absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen, which benefits fish and other aquatic organisms. This helps maintain stable oxygen levels in the aquarium promoting the overall health and well-being of the inhabitants. Also, a deep substrate provides ample space for plant roots to grow and spread. This allows plants to develop a strong root system, which can anchor them securely and provide access to essential nutrients. Overall, incorporating live aquatic plants into your aquarium can contribute to a natural and effective means of water filtration and purification helping to create a balanced and thriving aquatic ecosystem. While terrestrial plants are not typically suited for growing directly in aquarium water, their roots can still play a role in filtering aquarium water indirectly. Some hobbyists, for example me, use hydroponic setups to grow terrestrial plants immersed in aquarium water. In this setup, the roots of the terrestrial plants are submerged in the aquarium while the rest of the plant remains above the water surface. The roots absorb nutrients and pollutants from the water, helping to improve water quality. Even if terrestrial plants are grown outside the aquarium, their roots can still provide a substrate for beneficial bacteria to colonize. These bacteria help break down organic waste and convert harmful compounds like ammonia and nitrite into less toxic substances 
contributing to biological filtration. While terrestrial plants can indirectly contribute to water filtration in aquariums through these methods, it's essential to research and carefully manage the setup to ensure the health and well-being of both the plants and the aquatic inhabitants. Additionally, not all terrestrial plants are suitable for hydroponic or aquaponic systems, so it's crucial to choose species that can tolerate the conditions and benefit from the setup. Having fewer fish in an aquarium can contribute to maintaining cleaner water and a healthier environment for your aquatic inhabitants. With fewer fish, there is less waste being produced in the aquarium. This means there is less organic material breaking down and contributing to the buildup of harmful substances in the water. The bioload refers to the amount of waste and pollutants produced by the fish in the aquarium. Having fewer fish means a lower bioload, which makes it easier for the beneficial bacteria and natural filtration processes to keep up with maintaining water quality. In a crowded aquarium, fish may compete for resources such as food and oxygen, leading to stress and increased waste production. With fewer fish, each individual has access to more resources, reducing competition and stress levels. Ultimately, maintaining a lower fish population in the aquarium can lead to improved water quality, clearer water, and a healthier environment for both fish and other aquatic inhabitants. However, it's essential to strike a balance between having enough fish to create a vibrant and dynamic aquarium and keeping the population at a level that ensures water quality remains optimal. Proper aquarium management, including regular maintenance, monitoring water parameters, and providing a suitable environment is key to the health and well-being of your fish and plants. Feeding fish less can indeed be beneficial for maintaining good water quality in the aquarium. Less food means fewer leftovers and uneaten food in the aquarium, resulting in lower levels of organic waste. Excess food that remains uneaten can decompose and contribute to ammonia spikes leading to poor water quality and potential health issues for fish. Feeding fish less frequently or in smaller amounts reduces their metabolic activity and waste production, resulting in a lower bioload in the aquarium. A lower bioload means less organic matter breaking down in the water, which helps maintain a more stable and healthier environment for fish and other aquatic inhabitants. Fish food contains nutrients that are released into the water as waste, contributing to the buildup of nutrients like ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Feeding fish less reduces the input of nutrients into the aquarium, helping to prevent nutrient imbalances and algae overgrowth. Overfeeding is a common issue in aquariums and can lead to a variety of problems, including poor water quality, algae blooms, and health issues for fish. Feeding fish less frequently, or in smaller amounts, helps prevent overfeeding and its associated problems. However, it's essential to strike a balance when feeding fish less. Ensure that they still receive an adequate and balanced diet to meet their nutritional needs. Monitor the fish closely for signs of malnutrition or health problems, and adjust feeding amounts accordingly. As always, Thank you so much for watching this video. Peace and love.